Hi, this is Alfauzi Anihar from At Home Tuition. Welcome to our session today. The topic that we are going to discuss in our today's video is Graph Transformation Part 2 video. In Part 1 video, we discuss how to do Graph Transformation by Shift Method. There are 4 types of Shift Rules. We apply those rules to do shifting upwards, downwards, to the left and to the right. Let us continue the same topic here. We will be discussing stretches and compressions and reflections in this video. A scale is a non-rigid translation in that it does alter the shape and size of the graph of the function. A scale will multiply or divide coordinates and this will change the appearance as well as the location of the graph. A vertical scaling multiplies or divides every y coordinate of the constant while leaving the x coordinate unchanged. Now let's see what is meant by a horizontal thing. A horizontal scaling multiplies or divides every x coordinate by a constant while leaving the y coordinate unchanged. The vertical and horizontal scaling can be combined into one expression. In shifting we will be moving the vertex of the graph. But here instead of moving the vertex of the graph we will stretch or compress the graph. It might be simpler to think of a stretch or a compression in terms of a rubber band. When it is in its original state, it has a certain interior. When one stretches the rubber band, the interior gets skinnier or the edges get closer together. Same way, when one compresses the rubber band, the interior gets fatter or the edges get farther apart. Am I right? The same thing happens to our graph when we are doing stretching and compression. Here is a graph. Please have a glance over this. It has a parent function in purple, a vertical stretch in red and a vertical compression in blue. Please notice that the vertical stretch has moved the sides closer together or made the interior angle small while the vertical compression has moved the sides farther apart or made the interior angle larger. Am I right? So let us sum up all these concepts. Based on this, we can make generalization, I mean rules for vertical stretches and compression. So let's start with vertical stretching and shrinking. If a number c is greater than 1, then the graph of y is equal to c times f of x. As the graph of the function y equal to f of x, stretch vertically by c. If you are going to take any number greater than 1 and multiply it with a function, then you will be doing vertical stretch. Can you follow so far? Okay. If you are going to pick a number, if c lies in between 0 and 1, then the graph of y which is equal to c times f of x is the graph of y equal to f of x shrunk vertically by c. In case if you are going to pick any number in between 0 and 1 and multiply it with the function y equal to f of x, then you will be doing vertical shrink. Hope you understand the difference between vertical stretch and vertical shrink. Okay, if the constant is greater than 1, then you will be doing vertical stretch. If the number lies in between 0 and 1, then you will be doing vertical shrink. But please make sure the constant that you are going to choose should always be a positive number, real positive number. Okay, let me take one example and explain you how to apply vertical stretching and shrinking. Let me take a quadratic function and explain you how we are going to do vertical stretch by 2 and vertical shrink by 1 over 4. This is how a graph for any quadratic function will look like. Now multiply a constant greater than 1. Let us pick 2 here. A number greater than 1 is multiplied with the function y equal to x square. For example, we are taking a number 2, multiplying it with the function x square. So the new function would be y equal to 2x square. It means we have to make vertical stretch by 2. Okay, so the graph would look like this. Can you follow so far? Okay, now pick some number in between 0 and 1. For example, here we are picking 0 0.25, that is 1 over 4. Multiply that number with the function y equal to x square. I mean, we will be drawing the graph for y equal to 1 fourth x square. So it means we are going to vertically shrink the graph. So the graph would look like this. Let me use blue color for this graph. Hope you are clear with this example. Scaling factors are just multiplied 
2 is multiplied here or divided you just divide x square over 4 so scaling factors are nothing but a number multiplied or divided by the x or y components if the constant is grouped with the x then it is a horizontal scaling otherwise it is a vertical scaling hope you are clear with vertical stretching and shrinking ok now let's discuss about the horizontal stretching and shrinking so let's see the rule first if c is greater than 1 the graph of y equal to f of cx is the graph of y equal to f of x strung horizontally by c if c lies in between 0 and 1 then the graph of y which is equal to f of cx c is multiplied within the function is the graph of y equal to f of x stretched horizontally by c ok if c if the constant that you are choosing is greater than 1 then you will be doing horizontal shrink if c is c lies in between 0 and 1 then you will be doing horizontal stretch please notice the difference between the vertical stretching and shrinking with horizontal stretching and shrinking there you just multiply the number before the function here you are just multiplying the number with x I mean within the function hope you understand the difference between these two again I repeat scaling factors are multiplied or divided by the x components if the constant is grouped with x then it means horizontal scaling in case if the constant is grouped with y it means vertical scaling ok let us discuss one example let me take the graph of absolute value function so this is how a graph for any absolute function will look like let us pick any number greater than 1 for example 2 and let's find how the graph y equal to absolute value of 2x would look like please notice that the number is multiplied with x within the function so it would be horizontal shrink so you have to shrink the graph for 2 units by the factor of 2 so it would look like this this is how the graph for y equal to absolute value of 2x would look like ok now let us find how the graph for 1 over 2 will look like I have picked a number in between 0 and 1 I mean half 0.5 please notice that this number this constant is multiplied with x coordinate I mean within the function so it would be horizontal stretch hope you are clear with this concept now let me give you the summary of stretches and compressions for c greater than 1 to obtain the graph of c f of x stretch the graph of f of x the parent function vertically by a factor of c 1 over c times f of x means compress the graph of f of x vertically by a factor of c f of c x means compress the graph of the parent function f of x horizontally by a factor of c f of x over c will stretch the graph of f of x horizontally by a factor of c hope you are clear with all the four rules so you should know when to do horizontal stretch and compression and when to do vertical stretch and compression now let us discuss about the reflections a function can be re reflected about an axis by multiplying it by negative 1 to reflect about the y axis multiply every x by minus 1 to get negative x to reflect about x axis multiply f of x by negative 1 to get minus of f of x we know that the graphs can be reflected in either the x or y axis let us start with reflections in the x axis first please consider a quadratic function reflection over x axis is nothing but multiply the equation throughout by minus sign either you can create a t chart or you can just draw the graph draw the parent function and the transformation next so this is how the reflected graph will look like this is the parent function and this one is the reflected one now let's see an example for reflection in the y-axis for this one let me take a cubic function as an example for reflection over x-axis we multiply the entire equation throughout by minus sign but here we are just going to replace x by minus x and let's see what we are getting we are just replacing x by negative x so please be careful while using the parenthesis so let's draw the parent function it would look like this here is the parent function and the reflection over x y axis 
Reflection over x-axis means you it is just like folding a paper upside down. And reflection over y-axis means if you are folding a paper left to right. Let me give you the summary of the rules for reflections. If you are multiplying the function by a negative sign, it means the graph will reflect about the x-axis. In case if you are replacing x by negative x, it means you are reflecting the graph about y-axis. You should know the effect of the translation on domain and range. Any horizontal translation will affect the domain and leave the range unchanged. Any vertical translation will affect the range and leave the domain unchanged. This is an important point that you should keep in your mind while doing the graph translation. Apply the same translation to the domain or range that you apply for the apply to the x coordinates or the y coordinates. So this is all about translations, graph transformations. In case if you have any query regarding these two videos, kindly let me know. See you in the next video. Have a